Okay. So today we will complete Bhagavad Gita Krishna reading. Okay, eighteen point seven one. Shraddhavan and Suyascha, Shunya, the Kionaraha, Sopi Mukta Subal, Lo Shubal, Lokan, Prap Nuyat Punya Karmanam. One who listens with faith and without envy becomes free from sinful reactions and attains to the auspicious planets where the pious dwell. Mm, with faith and without envy. Envy of whom? Envy of Krishna. What is envy of Krishna? Envy of Krishna is we trying to imitate him or we trying to compete with him. We trying to enjoy sense gratification. He is envy. Uh, so we should hear with faith and also not try to compete with Krishna. Such people we become free from sinful reactions and attain Swarga. But, but in the 67th verse, Lord explicitly forbade the Gita's being spoken to those who are envious of the Lord. In other words, Bhagavad Gita is for devotees only. Which means what? Devotees are not envious of Krishna. Which means that devotees are not trying to compete with Krishna. Not trying to lord it over material nature. Hmm? But it so happens that sometimes the devotee of the Lord will hold open class. And in that class, not all the students are expected to be devotees. Why do such persons hold open class? It is explained here that although not everyone is a devotee, still there are many men who are not envious of Krishna. They have faith in Him as the Supreme Person of Godhead. If such persons hear from a bona fide devotee about the Lord, the result is that they become at once free from all sinful reactions. At once. Mm, and after that attain to the planetary system where all righteous persons are situated. Therefore, simply by hearing Bhagavad Gita, even a person who does not try to be a pure devotee, attains the result of righteous activities. Uh, so if we do bhakti and we don't come to the pure state, we will end up in Tvarga. Uh, Thus a pure devotee of the Lord gives everyone a chance to become free from all sinful reactions and to become a devotee of the Lord. He provides an opportunity to become a devotee, but if they don't want, then they will go to heaven. Generally, those who are free from sinful reactions, those who are righteous, very easily take to Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada is saying, well, yeah, they have an opportunity to go to Swarga, but actually they will have more propensity to take up Krishna consciousness. And so, in, gen, in another way, Prabhupada is saying, you can preach, preach through Bhagavad Gita uh, instead of any other means. Take Bhagavad Gita as the means to preach. So, this, you know, we want to do this more and more, invite people to hear Bhagavad Gita because even if they don't become devotees, they will become free from sinful reactions. They will be, if they are, you know, faithful and free from envy. And so please try to do this. You know, all of us have heard all of Bhagavad Gita. Recordings are there. If any aspect is unclear, you can go back here, the like, like classes. Um, but use this as a platform to preach. And the idea of this whole exercise was twofold. One is to ensure that we can all understand Bhagavad Gita and Prabhupada's purpose clearly. And what is the use of it? One is personal application, the other is preaching. So please use this as the platform basis for your preparation if required. Uh, not that it has to be used. There are so many other sources, but if you want, you can use. And then you please preach to people. Help them. Hmm? Otherwise, they are stuck here. The word Punyakarmanam is very significant. This refers to performance of great sacrifices like Ashwamedha Yagna. Those who are righteous in performing devotional service but who are not pure can attain planetary system of Dhruva. Yeah, he is a great devotee of the Lord and a special planet. So we, Prabhupada is saying that who are not pure, they can even go up to Dhruva Loka, not just Swarga. Yeah, they can go up to Dhruva Loka. So this is a big, great mercy uh, for people, materialists in this world, who are not envious of Krishna, who have faith 
सो वी शुड गिव देम एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू हियर भगवत गीता ड्यूटी From Arjuna, whether he understood the whole Bhagavad Gita in its proper perspective, this is very important. People read Bhagavad Gita, understand it in their own perspective. Uh, first is they don't re- hear from read from Propat as it is, then they will anyway develop another different perspective. Even devotees, they don't develop the proper perspective because they are not surrendered. Hmm. and they are not engaged seriously in practice of bhakti in seva because one who is engaged seriously in bhakti then dadami buddhi yogam tam krishna will reveal from within and the other thing is because we want to speculate we end up misunderstanding various aspects of bhagavad gita so it is important that one understands it in proper perspective if not the lord was ready to re explain any point actually anyone who hears bhagavad gita from bona fide spiritual master like krishna or his representative will find that all his ignorance is dispelled bhagavad gita is not an ordinary book written by a poet or fictional writer it's spoken by the supreme person of god any person fortunate enough to hear these teachings from krishna or from his bona fide representative is sure to become a liberated person get out of the darkness so at least by reading bhagavad gita uh, we can be sure that we will become liberated from this material bondage and whether we can achieve pure devotional service or not in this life that depends on our desire and effort arjunavacha nashtamo smritirlapta tvatprasadan maya chuta sitosmi gata sandeha karishye vachanam tava arjuna said my dear krishna o oh infallible one my illusion is now gone i have regained my memory by your mercy memory means that means that he already knew that he is a kshatriya he had to fight etc he was just covered by illusion no illusion is gone so he is able to remember everything properly i am now firm and free from doubt and i'm prepared to act according to your instructions all this while i was trying to defend trying to say that i should i should do the way i want it to be want to be done but now i am ready to follow what you are saying asking me to do the conditional position of a living entity represented by arjuna is that he has to act according to the order of the supreme lord uh, so if we we anyway act according to supreme lord either by him directly or by his maya uh, it's const- living entity is meant for self discipline the chaitanya mahaprabhu says that the actual position of living entity is that of eternal servant of krishna forgetting this principle living entity becomes conditioned but in serving supreme lord he becomes liberated living entity's constitution position is to be servitor he has to serve either maya or supreme lord if he serves supreme lord he is in his normal condition but if he prefers to serve maya then certainly be bondage in illusion the living entity is serving in this material world he is bound by lust and desires yet he thinks of himself as the master of the world see this is such a beautiful statement people are bound by lust and desires bound but they think they are free and their master of the world this is called illusion when a person is liberated his illusion is over and he voluntarily surrenders and to act according to lord's desires the last illusion is the proposition that he is god even if he thinks that he is no longer a conditioned soul but god he is so unintelligent that he does not think that if he were god then how could he be in doubt thus that he does not consider So that is the last layer of snare of illusion, last snare, last opportunity to hold him back hmm? is to think, make him think that he is God. Actually, to become free from illusory energy is to understand Krishna and agree to act according to His order. The word moha is very important. Moha refers to that which is opposed to knowledge. Actually, real knowledge is understanding that every living being is eternally servitor of the Lord. but instead of thinking oneself in that position living entity thinks that he is not a servant that he is the master of this material world for he wants to 
lord it over material nature that is his illusion this illusion can be overcome by the mercy of the lord or of a pure devotee when the illusion is over one agrees to act in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is acting according to krishna's order conditioned soul does not know that supreme lord is the master who is full of knowledge and who is the proprietor of everything whatever he desires he can bestow upon his devotees the friend of everyone and he is especially inclined to his devotee propad mentions this multiple places that krishna is especially inclined to his devotee mrs krishna is equal to all ha huh? but he is especially inclined to his devotee he is a controller of this material nature and of all living entities he is also the controller of inexhaustible time and is full of opulences and potencies he can supreme lord can give himself to the devotee one who does not know him is under the spell of illusion he does not become a devotee but a servitor of maya arjuna however after hearing bhagavad gita from krishna became free from illusion he could understand that krishna was not only his friend but also a supreme and you got it and he understood krishna factually so to study bhagavad gita is to understand krishna factually so this is also nice janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tatvatah how do we understand krishna in truth uh, by studying bhagavad gita propas bhagavad gita when a person is in full knowledge he naturally surrenders to krishna so which if you understand bhagavad gita then we should end up in sarva dharma anparitya Hmm. when arjuna understood that it was krishna's plan to reduce the unnecessary increase of population he agreed to fight according to krishna's desire he again took up his weapons to fight under the order of the supreme person of god it so we have to understand krishna we have to understand krishna what is the design of this material world why things are happening around us why corona happened or when something happens in our own life why this is happening to me we should understand from thinking putting ourselves in the position of being a servant of krishna uh, and considering that krishna is in control krishna is in power krishna has all the ability strength so why this is happening in my life what would krishna be intending me to learn so this is complete understanding of krishna the understanding of krishna means it's like when we try to understand a person we understand mota mota we understand what the person is then we will start thinking okay this person thinks like this so this person did like this maybe because of this reason like this you know we try to understand people's behavior and based on what we know of that person so similarly um, propada has given a, quite a you know exhaustive understanding of krishna as the supreme lord Mm, his uh, love and affection relationship with devotees all these aspects is covered in his purport so if we actually read all this and understand clearly and internalize it you know sin actually we should have what it should be sin uh, what is the word like uh, synthesized right like because different places there would be different things that would have been said so it should all be brought together and condensed to have one clear understanding uh, when we have that understanding then anything and everything that happens in our life or around us we'll be able to see through the lens of uh, shastra uh, you know about how krishna or what is krishna's view or why is something happening like this we can understand of course it's not like we we, we will be able to understand to the extent of our purity but to a great extent propad has given us the understanding of krishna hmm. so to the extent we become pure we will be able to understand krishna better and then we will understand okay this situation is happening in this life okay this is the reason this is happening this is the reason hmm. so this is very important actually the whole understanding of bhagavad gita proper perspective proper perspective not just like whatever we want and finally we have to conclude to, to come to this conclusion i will follow whatever you say krishna krishna krishna's representative sanjay uvacha 
इतिहम वासुदेव से पार्थ से महात्मन संवाद मम्मशौषम अद्भुत रोम हर्षण संजय उटवत because krishna is speaking about himself and his energies to the living entity arjuna great devotee of the lord if we follow in the footsteps of arjuna to understand krishna so this is very nice how do we follow in the footsteps of arjuna to understand krishna we have to go into the mood of arjuna what was mood of arjuna first he was denying to fight next he surrendered submissively surrendered and very submissively asking questions to enquire and clarify so if we put ourselves in his shoes and then we try to hear why krishna is saying this next verse why krishna is saying this next verse hmm? and of course our acharyas have done this now we can study and also we can also introspect uh, you know reflect on the conversation huh? and if we understand putting ourselves into arjuna's shoes then our life will be happy and successful because we will understand it properly without our own interpretation sanjay realized this and as he began to understand it he related the conversation to dhritarashtra now it is concluded that wherever there is a krishna and arjuna there is victory ha uh, vyasa prasada chutavan etad guhyam aham param yogam yogeshwar at krishna sakshat katayata swayam by the mercy of vyasa i have heard this most confidential talks most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism krishna was speaking personally to arjuna so these are most confidential talks because krishna talks about confidential more confidential most confidential truth vyasa was the spiritual master of sanjaya and sanjaya admits that it was by vyasa's mercy that he could understand the supreme personality of god it so this is also nice sanjaya is just getting a is seeing is having a vision of the battlefield uh, but things he is explaining is also possible because he is a uh, he is a student of vyasa hmm. this means that one has to understand krishna not directly but through the medium of the spiritual master the spiritual master is a transparent medium although it is true that the experience is still direct what does this mean who can explain spiritual master is a transparent medium although it is true that the experience is still direct Anybody wants to attempt? Mm, so, spiritual master is a transparent medium of the mercy because when we can get connected to the parampara, the mercy flows through the spiritual master to us. When the mercy comes, we will experience Krishna directly. Meaning, we will not experience Krishna through the spiritual master. It's not like we will have a, you know, like we will see through. the eyes of the spiritual master not like that we can experience krishna directly but the mercy to experience krishna directly comes through the parampara from the parampara through the transparent medium of the spiritual master and what is this krishna's ex- experiencing krishna directly means at the stage of prema we will see krishna we will experience his touch we will hear his flute sound we will hear, all this is direct experience of krishna that happens directly we as jiva will directly experience krishna but the mercy is coming through the guru ropa is saying this is the mystery of my mystery of the disciplic succession when the spiritual master is bona fide then one can hear bhagavad gita directly as arjuna heard it there are many mystics and yogis but krishna is the master of all yoga systems as instruction is explicitly stated surrender unto me one who does so he is the topmost yogi yogi naam api sarvesham narada is the direct disciple of krishna and spiritual master of vyasa therefore vyasa is a bona fide is as bona fide as arjuna because he comes in disciplic succession and sanjay is the direct disciple of vyasa 
therefore by the grace of vyasa sanjaya senses were purified and he could see and hear krishna directly see otherwise how could sanjaya see vishwarupa only to who those pure souls to whom krishna gave the vision they could see so sanjaya was also one of them because he was also in parampara one who directly hears krishna can understand this confidential knowledge if one does not come to disciplic succession he cannot hear krishna therefore his knowledge is always imperfect at least as far as understanding bhagavad gita is concerned in bhagavad gita all the yoga systems karma gnana bhakti are explained krishna is the master of all such mysticism it is to be understood however that as arjuna was fortunate enough to understand krishna directly so by the grace of vyasa sanjay was also able to hear krishna directly actually there is no difference between hearing directly from krishna and hearing from krishna via bona fide speaker vyasa the master is the representative of vyasadeva also therefore according to vedic system on the birth of the spiritual master the disciples conduct the ceremony called vyasa rajan samshrutya samshrutya samvadam himam adbhutam keshava arjuna yo punyam hrishyami ta muhur muhu o king as i repeatedly recall this wondrous and holy dialogue between krishna and arjuna i take pleasure being thrilled at every moment the understanding of bhagavad gita is so transcendental that anyone who becomes conversant with the topics of krishna and arjuna become righteous and he cannot forget such talks this is the transcendental position of spiritual life in other words one who hears the gita from the right source directly from krishna attains full krishna consciousness what does this mean that there are so many instructions in bhagavad gita that if we start applying them in our life there is no way we cannot become fully krishna consciousness as in we will become fully krishna conscious but if see simply hear and not apply then we can't become fully krishna conscious hmm uh, but so in i've told this before in vedic uh, field or you know vedic platform hearing means hearing and applying not simply theoretical knowledge theory gnana and vignana should always come together in on spiritual knowledge and the result of krishna consciousness is that one becomes increasingly enlightened and he enjoys life with a thrill <laughs> proper they saying thrill not only for some time but at every moment why thrill why is thrill in krishna consciousness he enjoys life with a thrill because actually when we start seeing everything from the eyes of guru sadhu shastra bhagavad gita first of all we understand the you know background of what is going on second because if we are surrendered to krishna and we have sacrificed our life for krishna then krishna is also there and he is saying yoga kshemam vahamyam and then we are faced with so many situations it's a thrill He's saying oh krishna is there and this difficult situation is there okay uh, krishna will take care how will he take care you know it's just like some excitement in life saying okay i am doing something for krishna i have so many difficulties krishna is there he will take care and it's it's all about just happiness because it's all centered around krishna hmm? so one, once we become fully krishna conscious we will become zero maya conscious that means that anything we see we connect it to krishna hmm? it's very easy it is said and done but this is the perfection of bhagavad gita is that we become purely krishna conscious and then propadi saying enjoys life with a thrill <laughs> like some adventure sport tatcha samsmrutya samsmrutya rupam atyadbhutam hare hare vismayo me mahan rajan prachami ta punah puna oh king as i remember the wonderful form of lord krishna i am struck with wonder more and more and re- i rejoice again and again it appears that sanjay also by the grace of vyasa could see the universal form it is of course said that lord krishna had never exhibited such a form before it was exhibited to arjuna yet some great devotees could also see the universal form and it was shown to arjuna and vyasa was one of them he was one of the great devotees of the lord and is considered to be powerful incarnation of krishna vyasa disclosed this to his disciple sanjay who remembered that wonderful form exhibited and enjoyed it repeatedly so vyasa disclosed it 
You see, this is the mercy of the Guru. That when Guru gets something, he can actually pass it on to his disciple. Oh, nice. Okay, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho, then Uddara, Yatra Shreer Vijay, Obhutir Dhruvani, Tirmatir Mama. Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power and morality. That is my opinion. And this opinion is very valid because he is also pure devotee Sanjaya in Parampara. Huh? That means opulence, victory, extraordinary power and morality. But not for sense gratification or the service of the Lord. Bhagavad Gita began with an inquiry of the Dhritarashtras. He was hopeful of the victory of his sons, assisted by great warriors like Bhishma, Drona and Karna. He was hopeful that the victory could be on his side. But after describing the scene on the battlefield, Sanjaya told the king, you are thinking of victory, but my opinion is that where Krishna and Arjuna are present, there will be all good fortune. He directly confirmed that Dhritarashtra could not expect victory for his side. Victory was certain for the side of Arjuna because Krishna was there. Therefore, Krishna, Krishna's acceptance of the post of the charioteer for Arjuna was an exhibition of another opulence. Krishna is full of all opulences and renunciation is one of them. There are many instances of such renunciation for Krishna is also the master of renunciation. The fight was actually between Duryodhana and Yudhisthira. Arjuna was fighting on behalf of his elder brother Yudhisthira. Because Krishna and Arjuna were on the side of Yudhisthira, Yudhisthira's victory was certain. This battle was to decide who would rule the world and Sanjaya predicted that the power would be transferred to Yudhisthira. It is also predicted here that Yudhisthira, after gaining victory, would flourish more and more because not only was he righteous and pious, but he was also a strict moralist. 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 He never spoke a lie during his life. There are many less intelligent persons who take Bhagavad Gita to be a discussion of topics between two friends on a battlefield. But such a book cannot be a scripture. Some may protest that Krishna incited Arjuna to fight, which is immoral. But the reality of the situation is clearly stated. Bhagavad Gita is the supreme instruction in morality. Supreme instruction is stated in the ninth chapter. Anmana Bhavamad Bhaktaha. One must become a devotee of Krishna and the essence of all religion is to surrender unto Krishna. The instructions of Bhagavad Gita constitute the supreme process of religion and of morality. All other process may be purifying and may lead to this process. But the last instruction of the Gita is the last word in all morality and religion. Surrender unto Krishna. This is the verdict of the 18th chapter. From Bhagavad Gita we can understand that to realize oneself by philosophical speculation, and by meditation is one process, but to fully surrender unto Krishna is the highest perfection. This is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. The path of regulated principles according to the orders of life, which is Varna and Ashrama, may be a confidential path of knowledge, but although the rituals of religion are confidential, meditation and cultivation of knowledge are still more confidential. So this is karma, then this is dhyana and jnana, are more confidential and bhakti uh, is in full con Krishna consciousness is the most confidential instruction. That is the essence of the 18th chapter. Another feature of Bhagavad Gita is that the actual truth is supreme personality of God is Krishna. The absolute truth. The absolute truth is realized in three features. Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Perfect knowledge of the absolute truth means perfect knowledge of Krishna. If one understands Krishna, then all departments of knowledge are part and parcel of that understanding. Hmm? Krishna is transcendental. For he is always situated in his eternal, internal potency. The living entities are manifested of his energy and are divided into two classes, Baddha and Mukta. Such living entities are innumerable and they are considered fundamental parts of Krishna, material energy is manifested into 24 divisions. The creation is affected by eternal time and is created and dissolved by external energy. As manifestation of the cosmic world repeatedly becomes visible and invisible. Bhutva, Bhutva, Praliyate. In Bhagavad Gita, five principal subject matters have been discussed. Ishvara, Prakriti, Jiva, 
Kala and Karma. All is dependent on Supreme Person of God, Krishna. All conceptions of the Absolute Truth, Brahman, Paramatma, and any other transcendental conception exist within the category of understanding the Supreme Person of Godhead. Although superficially, the Supreme Person of Godhead, the living entity, material nature, and time appear to be different. Nothing is different from the Supreme. Achintya Beda Beda. Uh, Lord Chaitanya's philosophy is that of Achintya Beda Beda. His system philosophy constitutes perfect knowledge of the Absolute Truth. The living entity in his original position is pure spirit. Is just like the anatomic particle of the Supreme Spirit. Thus, Lord Krishna may be compared to the sun and the living entities to sunshine because the living entities are the marginal energy of Krishna. They have a tendency to be in contact either with material energy or with spiritual energy. In other words, the living entity is situated between two energies of the Lord and because he belongs to the superior energy, he has a particle of independence. By proper use of that independence, he comes under the direct order of Krishna. Thus, he attains his normal condition in the pleasure-giving Ladini potency. Send the Bhakti Vedanta purports to the 18th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of its conclusion, the perfect of renunciation. Hare Krishna. Okay. We are done. Hare Krishna. We are done with Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Anybody has any questions, comments? Well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, His Grace Narayan Padmana Prabhu for uh, sincerely discussing Bhagavad Gita with inner meanings and that's why this session is for. So very grateful for you, Prabhu. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> I wish that we start Bhagavatam soon. <laughs> That's his one desire. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start Bhagavatam, just that, you know, Bhagavatam will not run in this format. Mm. Because if you read, if you have to read, so Bhagavatam, okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. so one thing before I move on to Bhagavatam, uh, let me stop this recording. Hare Krishna. <laughs>